Islands are not always beautiful, tropical paradise destinations. Sometimes they have creepy secrets lurking in the sand dunes. From an island that's stuffed full of pussy cats to another with a smelly day job, here are 20 most mysterious islands on Earth. Number 20. Six-legged giant finds secret hideaway, hides for 80 years. Scientists discovered a skin-crawling secret that this strange island had concealed for 80 years. This crazy-looking place is known as Ball's Pyramid, and it's an island that was formed by what is left over from an ancient volcano. That volcano is believed to have emerged from the sea about 7 million years ago, and it was named after a British Navy guy from 1788 after he had spotted it off the coast of Australia in the South Pacific. Now, that was not the place that ships stopped, but we'll be back there in a minute, so bear with me. Just a stone's throw away is another small island called Lord Howe Island. This place was famous for having a weird and totally unique insect that would go around pretending to be a piece of wood. They were named tree lobsters by the people that landed on the island to poke around, and naturally, however, the European invaders were less than careful with the discovery and managed to wipe out its entire population within a short period of time. In 1918, a supply ship from Britain ran aground here and everyone put ashore. They also managed to bring a load of black rats off the vessel as well, and those rats really enjoyed eating the tree lobsters, and within two years, they had taken over the island and all the insects were gone. Oh my gosh, how beautiful is this water? But remember that weird, pointy island from before? Well, apparently, a couple of intrepid climbers were poking about on Ball's Pyramid, and they found a spiky old bush, and underneath that they found, would you believe it, two of these tree lobsters that everyone thought were extinct. And nobody really knows how they got there. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Easter Island the Moai statues of Easter Island are a familiar image, but they remain cloaked in mystery for many of us. The word Moai actually means statue, and the island was known to its inhabitants as Rapa Nui rather than Easter Island. Anyways, all that standard colonial stuff aside, these Moai are believed to have been carved to commemorate ancestors of the people on the island. They were created from around 1000 BC until the late 17th century, and during that time, the people of Rapa Nui created about 887 of these statues. They became larger and more complex as time went on. There are 14 of which were made from basalt, and the rest of them are carved from volcanic tuff. After the European invasion of 1838, the Moai were toppled, and ultimately, the entire island suffered social collapse. Many of the stories and secrets of the island's past disappeared with its inhabitants, and the culture of Rapa Nui was oral rather than written down, so no records exist that explain the history and habits of its people. The Moai represent the sense of mystery that surrounds this place. Number 18. Snake Island now, before you go trying to book a trip, you should know that civilians are not allowed to visit Brazil's Snake Island. I know, I know, it's so disappointing. I expect that you were simply chomping at the bit to get to a snake-infested island. Located 90 miles off the coast of Sao Paulo, Snake Island is the only place on Earth that's home to the extraordinarily deadly Golden Lancehead Viper. These snakes are insanely dangerous, and a bite from one of these venomous creatures could easily dispense with an unfortunate human in under an hour. So, it seems like a sensible move by the Brazilian government to ban people from blundering about on this island. There are said to be so many snakes that some parts of the island have one snake for every square meter of space. Between 1909 and the early 1920s, there were a few people that lived on the island. Presumably, they were especially light on their feet to tiptoe between all those heaps of deadly vipers. They were living in the island's lighthouse. Unfortunately, you can probably guess where the story's headed. The lighthouse keeper and his entire family were killed by a gang of vicious snakes that somehow found a way into the lighthouse and bit the lot of them until they were dead. Oh, such a fun place. 
Number 17. Socotra, the land of the dragon's blood tree. A place with a name that sounds as if it were straight out of the pages of a fairy tale, the Dragon's Blood Tree is an evergreen that's only found on Yemen's Socotra Archipelago. It's an ancient and revered tree with a distinct appearance and blood-red sap. The open umbrella shape of the Dragon's Blood Tree is utterly unique, and the clusters of these trees on this ancient landscape look as if they were conceived in a fantasy film. But the magic of the trees is not only in its astonishing appearance, they bear a deep, red oozing resin, which gives the tree the appearance of bleeding, but which also has some unique medicinal properties. The sap has been used to treat all manner of ailments from ulcers to diarrhea, and it's also famed for its use as a varnish for violins, for dyeing wool, glue for pottery, and even as makeup and toothpaste. This is the only place in the entire world where this extraordinary species of tree grows. As the climate changes and war continues to rage on the mainland, the future of this unbelievable place looks uncertain. Number 16. Okunoshima Rabbit Island in Japan So here we have the Island of Bunnies which is a weird and super cute example of Japan's kawaii obsession in action. The island of Okonoshima in the Inland Sea of Japan is home to a population of thousands of wild rabbits. For real. The bunnies are protected by law, cats and dogs are banned, and these cute fluff balls are left to their own devices, which is generally, as I am sure you likely know, to breed like rabbits. But despite the fact that this is essentially a perpetual bunny orgy, it remains an enormously popular place for tourists to visit. A favorite activity for the visiting humans seems to be to get involved with the rabbits and actually lay on the ground while the animals hop all over them. It is cute, I guess, but the sheer numbers of bunnies is enough to give me pause. There is something of a horror film about this, even if it seems cute to begin with. Thousands of bunnies crawling all over you. Nothing weird about that at all. Number 15. Sable Island National Park Reserve Sitting far out in the North Atlantic, Sable Island is a remote and isolated place. It's famous for being the home of wild horses that roam freely across the land, and also the island is known to be where the largest colony of gray seals hang out on the beaches. One of Canada's important national parks, Sable Island is accessible only by air and sea, and only for part of the year when the weather allows. It's possible to visit for a day trip between June and October, but the rest of the year is as you would expect for a remote and chilly bit of Canada to be. You would not want to go out there then anyways. The island itself is a refuge for all kinds of birds, plants, and insects, and many of these have adapted perfectly to the conditions on Sable Island. In fact, there are many species that can only be found here and don't seem to exist anywhere else on the planet. Number 14. Palmyra, the Haunted Island of the Pacific The island of Palmyra in the Pacific is actually an atoll, meaning that it's a group of small coral islets that make up an approximate island shape. The reef is rich in marine life, and there's a dense jungle on the land. It looks just like you might imagine a desert island or the perfect tropical paradise to be, except that it might be much more sinister than it first appears. It seems that Palmyra has a bit of a reputation that goes back centuries. Back in the early 19th century, the wrecking of ships in mysterious circumstances would begin, and it seemed as though that was just the beginning of the dangerous goings-on in this place. In 1816, a pirate vessel named Esperanza is said to have wrecked here, and the crew, desperately trying to survive for almost a year before burying their treasure and building a couple of rafts, one survivor made it to a whaling boat, but the other and the rest of the crew would never be seen again. In 1870, a ship named Angel would wreck here, and it's believed that those who had survived made it onto the shore of Palmyra, but when another vessel passed by a few months later, the brutally murdered corpses of the crew of the Angel were found scattered about the island. That mystery was never solved. It seemed that though there had been some malevolent spirits haunting the island, and during the Second World War, the United States Navy occupied Palmyra, and they experienced some rather weird stuff. A patrol aircraft dropped from the sky directly over the island, and yet there is no trace of it nor its crew to ever be recovered. 
recovered. Another plane flew off course, and after takeoff, it disappeared from the radar, never to be seen again. Unexplained deaths occurred amongst the sailors, suicides and even murders, depression and anxiety were a constant looming presence. In later years, a couple would disappear there, and then eventually the bones of the woman were found in a container on the island, and her husband has never been found. The whole incident was weird and absolutely mysterious. Number 13. The Island of the Dolls an unbelievably creepy place with a super sad story, this island is in an unpronounceable place in Mexico, bought by Don Julian Santana Barrera. This man apparently went insane, sequestered himself on the island, and then during his time there, made the sad discovery of the body of a young girl who had drowned in the lake. Shortly after that, a doll floated onto the shore. Now, this may or may not have been the event that pushed him over the edge. Some accounts would say that he was already mad before that happened, and then there are even reports that Don Julian imagined the whole thing and the obsession itself. Anyways, he then apparently set about collecting dolls and dangling them off of all the trees around the entire island. As time went on, the entire space was then transformed into a creepy and bizarre monument of broken, decaying, and damaged dolls. He never fixes them or cleans them up, they're just simply added to the collection as they're found. Although to many people the place looks horrifying and, well, frankly, pretty upsetting, Don Julian apparently believed the dolls to be beautiful protectors and felt safe amongst them. As you would expect in a story like this one, it did not end well for the tragic figure of Don Julian. He would be found drowned in the same area where he had believed the girl had died. Number 12. Vulcan Point Vulcan Point is a rather unique place. It's an island that sits in the middle of a lake, that sits in the middle of a volcano, that's also inside of another lake, inside of a bigger island, in the Philippine archipelago, in the Pacific Ocean. That's a whole lot of stuff. Now, before you look at this place and think that it's all pretty and benign and like a paradise, you shouldn't be fooled. At the middle of it all lies the volcano. This volcano is a mean mother chuffer as well. It had 33 eruptions on record, which makes it the second most active volcano in the whole of the Philippines. Now, in fact, it is a part of the so-called Ring of Fire, which is an area of the Pacific that's known for earthquakes and extremely enthusiastic volcanoes. This nasty old volcano had been rumbling away since 1991. It had been dormant for a little bit after an eruption in 1977 and has killed literally thousands of people in its time. The most recent eruption occurred in January of 2020, where it took the lives of 39 people and dried up the lake completely. It's the trouble with these tricky volcanoes. Just when you get used to the one kind of landscape, they then explode themselves everywhere and make a ruddy big mess, changing the entire place all over again. Number 11. Christmas Island in the middle of the Indian Ocean, about 1,500 kilometers to the west of Australia, is Christmas Island. Rather than being a fun, festive, Santa sort of place, this is actually a tropical island which is famed for its massive variety of flora and fauna, especially rare birds and crabs. What a fun one! Through the 19th century, the island was exploited for its natural resources. Phosphate mining would turn out to be the big business there. The island also became a center for conflict during the Second World War in the Pacific. In 1942, the island was invaded and occupied by Japanese forces. They would imprison the Europeans that were on the island and then hunted the Malay and Chinese workers. Then, in 1943, they sent half of the island's population to prison camps in Indonesia. In the 1970s, the mining workers unionized and saw a dramatic improvement in poor working conditions. And then in 1980, a large part of the island would be declared a national park. Number 10. Floating Islands of the Euros on Lake Titicaca Lake Titicaca, apart from having the funniest name, is also the biggest high-altitude lake in the world. Would you credit it? As well as all of that excitement, Old Lake Titicaca, let's just say it again, shall we? Titicaca is also where you can find some mysterious floating islands. The Euros Islands of Titicaca are made of aquatic reeds that are called Totora. 
These have been used by Andean people for generations to craft these floating islands on which they build their homes, also from the same reeds. There are approximately 60 to 70 of these islands in total, and the numbers are kind of fluid though, because they may merge or disappear as their inhabitants move to a different island. The islands are just a part of the traditional lives of the indigenous people who live here on Lake Titicaca, and they also wear the clothing and live the same way that they have for hundreds, if not thousands of years. Although, of course, many people also enjoy the convenience of modern stuff like motorboats and solar panels and such. But these days, however, they're also a tourist attraction and have adjusted their lives to be convenient to the visiting nosy parkers of the world who come to Lake Titicaca. Number 9. The Great Pacific Garbage Patch in the north of the Pacific Ocean, there is a monstrous mess of trash known as the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, rather euphemistically known as marine debris. This is actually a colossal pile of litter that ends up floating about in our seas and oceans. This is the shameful accumulation of tons and tons of garbage, predominantly plastic waste, that is clumped together as a result of the currents in these parts of the Pacific Ocean. And while the surface looks utterly atrocious, it's likely that it's just the tip of the trash berg. Approximately 70% of marine debris will sink to the bottom of the ocean, and who knows how many inches of detritus sits on the surface itself. The truth is, nobody knows exactly how much trash is contained in the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, but it is a lot. Around 80% of it is believed to have originated from land-based sources. The remaining 20% is junk that's littered by boats and such. It should come as no surprise that all of this trash is not good for the marine life in this ocean. Turtles will often fall victim to plastic bags and will eat them, mistaking them for jellyfish, and birds mistake other plastic objects for food which they eat or even feed their young, which causes death in a variety of horrible and atrocious ways. Seals will regularly get tangled in fishing nets and drown, and the terrible results of this pile of rubbish are innumerable. This affects everything from the biggest of whales right down to the algae and plankton that are being starved of light by the Colossus. It does spell doom for all. Number 8. Cat Island, Tashirojima Japan seemingly has an island for each species of animal, especially those fluffy ones. This time, we're on Cat Island, or as it's known, Toshirojima, and this place, yes, is teeming with felines. It's naturally a bit of a tourist destination for cat-loving visitors, but it didn't begin as a novelty. This island used to be the center for silkworm production. These precious commodities were at risk from rats and other pests, so cats were brought in to protect the silkworm cocoons from being eaten by rodents. The cats were looked over by the islanders, although they lived a semi-wild existence, surfing on the scraps and such offered by fishermen and local people. Throughout time, the population of people on the island began decreasing, much like everywhere else in rural or remote parts of Japan, and the cat population basically exploded. With fewer people to intervene, the cats now rule the entire place. The population is approximately 25% human and 75% cat. It is possible to go for a day trip and visit this weird place, which has naturally leaned into the cat theming, but you may not under any circumstances bring a dog onto the island. Number 7. Deer Island one of the islands in Boston Harbor, Massachusetts, this place is technically no longer an island at all. In fact, it hasn't been an island since 1938. Back then, a hurricane caused a massive beach erosion and joined the island up with the mainland. Anyways, it's apparently an interesting place nonetheless. Well, if you happen to be interested in wastewater treatment plants, and I ask you, who the heck isn't? Throughout history, Deer Island has been inhabited by indigenous peoples. It was used as a quarantine place for immigrants. The military has made use of the space, and thousands of prisoners were placed here at what was once the County House of Corrections. These days, though, it's a wastewater treatment plant you know, like sewage, so it probably doesn't smell especially delightful. But what else can I say about this not really an island on our list of islands? Well, if you hold your nose, you could take a walk around the island and enjoy the views of the North Shore of Boston, some of the other islands in the harbor, and 12 enormous sludge digesters. Mmm, delicious. Number 6. Howland Island 
Howland Island is located in the southwest of the Pacific Ocean. It is a coral atoll that once went by the name of Worth Island. Back in 1822, a Nantucket whaling captain named George Worth named the island after himself as old-timey white guys were in the habit of doing. Then in 1842, another whaling ship from America popped over for a visit and renamed the island Howland Island after their ship's lookout, presumably because he bagged it by seeing it first. The United States then claimed ownership of the island and a bunch of others because it had a whole heap of guano everywhere. Guanu, in case you did not know, is the poo of seabirds and bats. Back in 1856, the United States Congress would pass the Guanu Islands Act, which declared that the U.S. would claim any unclaimed islands that had a whole lot of bat poop on them. It's weird, but apparently these old piles of poo were rich sources of the stuff that goes into gunpowder, and as well as being a highly prized agricultural fertilizer. Well, these days all of that poo has been used up, and now the island is just a home to sea turtles and birds, and is designated as a U.S. National Wildlife Refuge. Number 5. Hashima Island Located just off the coast of Japan, about 9.5 miles away from Nagasaki, Hashima Island is a small and unpopulated place that goes by the nickname Battleship Island. The Japanese island of Hashima was abandoned back in the 1970s. It had been a 5,000-person strong community which had been built around the mines that were there for the purpose of the place. Since the end of that industry on the island, it has found a new purpose that's giving day trippers the willies. Yes, this is a ghost island which draws tour boats of visitors looking for an eerie thrill. Many of the structures that are on the island are in a state of serious disrepair and risk collapse. So the days of spooky independent exploration are gone. If you want to take in the crumbling sights of Ashima, you have to take a tour, which likely is not unravels some of the more scary aspects of the adventure, although it still looks kind of like a scene from a zombie apocalypse. So it really depends on how fertile your imagination nation is. But shuffling around in a group of straw hat wearing geriatrics may just take the edge off of the fear factor, as long as you don't miss the return of the boat crossing, that is. Number 4. North Sentinel Island The Sentinelese are of the most isolated people on the planet. They actively reject any contact with the outside world and they may have inhabited their island as a people for 55,000 years now. Complete isolation on a small island in the Indian Ocean means that the Sentinelese are violently protective of their territory and have murdered anyone that has poked their nose into their business. It does sound harsh, but with their neighboring island's populations destroyed by disease that was imported from other places, any germ or virus that they might catch from an outsider would probably wipe them out. Obviously, it's tricky to understand anything much about a tribe that you can't really get near without receiving an arrow in the chest. And so, all that's known has been observed by a few nosy parkers on boats that were carefully moored further out than the arrows could reach off the coast of the island. In 1880, a British expedition would land on the island and discover the villages and houses abandoned. Presumably, the tribe had seen the invading force and then hidden themselves. The expeditioners did come across an old couple and some children, and in the hideous wisdom of the colonial attitude, they then kidnapped the people from the island for scientific reasons. The Sentinelese quickly became sick with disease, and the older people all perished. The children were returned to the island, but how many were then infected with deadly diseases is obviously unknown. It's no wonder that the outsider is met with hostility by the Sentinelese. Various attempts at communication have been made throughout the 1970s and 80s, with gifts being left on the beaches, but most were rejected and then buried by the tribe. More recently, it's finally been accepted that this is probably the safest for the Sentinelese tribe if they're just left in peace. I guess the nosy parkers have finally gotten the message. Number 3. Poveglia Island in the past, islands were often used as places to keep people quarantined, and in northern Italy near Venice, there is one such island that has one of the darkest and most unpleasant histories. You cannot visit the place, but really, why would you want to go there? Poveglia Island is just a half mile from Venice, but despite its fancy architecture and enviable location, it is a forbidden and haunted place that most Venetians fear. 
Between 1793 and 1814, it would be used as a plague quarantine station, or lazaretto, and later used as a mental hospital. The hospital had a terrible reputation, and local stories say that a doctor there would torture and kill many of his patients, often by throwing them off the bell tower. The hospital closed in 1968, but the rumors and fear around it remains. There are so many scary stories that are associated with the island, and in fact, people say that as many as 160,000 individuals perish there and would be buried. If that is true, some say that it means that 50% of the soil on the island is actually made up of human remains. Nobody wants to think about that, and I'm so sorry for putting that particular thought into your heads. Number 2. Ramri Island Towards the end of the Second World War, this island off the coast of Burma was the site of a horrific massacre by crocodiles. For six long weeks, a battle was fought between British forces and Japanese soldiers. Fighting would be fierce, and eventually the Japanese forces were split into two groups. One group of about a thousand soldiers would be isolated and trapped. They decided then to try to circumnavigate the British by taking a route through the mangrove swamps of Ramri Island. This was, in retrospect, a horrible idea. The eight-mile journey through the swamp was so treacherous, and they were infested with mosquitoes, leeches, and snakes. Oh, and massive saltwater crocodiles. These opportunistic predators could not believe their luck, and over the course of just a few days, the crocodiles seemed to have killed and eaten more than 500 of the Japanese soldiers. It's believed that out of the 1,000 that went into the swamp, only about 480 made it out alive. Number 1. Oshima Island Oshima Island is a volcanic island off the coast of Honshu, Japan. It's still an active volcano, apparently, but that doesn't seem to stop people from living on the island, which is mainly known for being a massively popular tourist destination. The volcano last had big eruptions in 1968 and then again in 1986. These were dangerous enough to cause an evacuation, but then it erupted again in 1990, and seemingly just a little bit, as it didn't seem to cause much of a kerfuffle. Now, I don't know, but the casualness of volcano living just doesn't seem like a comfortable fit. Maybe that's just me, because I prefer not to get my exercise running away from pyroclastic flow, you know. Well, that's the end of our whistle-stop tour of some of the islands of the world. Which of these mysterious islands has spooked you the most? Let me know all about it in the comments down below. Also, be sure to check out the other cool stuff that's showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time. I love you.